What's up YouTube? This is going to be a follow-up video to my most recent video with the isolation leak test. Fixed a leak there, left it on 275. We're still on 275 PSI holding. So I'm going to go ahead and switch my gauges over and we're going to pressurize from the condensing circuit. Leave these ball valves closed and make sure there's no leaks on that side of the system right there. If everything holds good, got a dryer core with me. We'll change that dryer core and throw it on a vacuum and see how far we can suck it down. All right, so for the condenser section of the isolation test, I've had 120 PSI on it for about 45 minutes now, and it is not budging. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all the refrigerant out of the entire system. And then we are going to remove the cap on that dryer shell and replace the dryer core, put it on a vacuum, see how far we can pull it down, and then we will recharge with everybody's favorite refrigerant, MO99. Again, that is not up to me. They've been running it at this school district for a long time on these condensers. I hate the shit, but it is what it is. They're supplying the refrigerant. They told me to go with MO99, so that's what we're gonna do. So let's go ahead and dump this refrigerant, then I'll get some footage of changing the dryer core for y'all. Um, posted, uh, posted how to do that in one of my previous videos, but we'll get a little bit of footage of it anyway, and then I'll show you the vacuum setup. off this dryer short uh, dryer shell cap we're gonna need a half inch socket and a small crescent wrench to back up these nuts right here they'll break loose really easy make sure you don't drop the square nut down the bottom right in there you'll need to peel that off with like a thermostat screwdriver or a knife make sure it's real clean the dryer core will have a series of different size gaskets inside the container you just use the appropriate one there's a little spring that goes on top And the core itself just pulls right out like that. So you're just going to do reverse order of process to replace it. Also make sure when you put your new gasket on, this gasket right inside here, you use a little bit of some of the refrigeration oil or some nylon. Alright, so as you can see inside of the container, with a number of gaskets. So you 
you're going to find your appropriately sized one for the cap. Uh, these are very delicate, so be very careful not to break it. back 
up the nuts on the bottom side and tighten it back up. All right, now that we got the core replaced, got the vacuum set up, got the fuel piece vacuum pump, 8 CFM. I have the gas ballast open. You're supposed to leave the gas ballast open until you reach around 3,000 microns. So I'm pulling my vacuum from indoors. I got a core removal tool on the suction line with a half inch hose. Core removal tool on this line with a 3 8 uh, 3 8 by quarter inch hose, core removed. And then I've got a 3 8 quarter inch by quarter inch hose going to this liquid line with the core removed. So I went ahead and I put my micron gauge all the way down here on top of this dryer core. So whatever my micron reading is here, it's gonna be about as true as it gets since I'm so far away from where I'm pulling a vacuum. So I've got the micron gauge right there. It's on top of a little six inch uh, flex hose with a ball valve. And what I'll do is whenever I reach a good micron range, I'll just close off this ball valve, put a cap on after I take the micron gauge off, and then I'll use that hose, which is will still be under vacuum, to charge with my refrigerant. That way I'm not having to switch hoses or gauge up or anything like that to get refrigerant in. So as you can see, this is quite a large system with a lengthy, lengthy line set and a very large coil circuit. With those cores removed, I'm already at about 6,000 microns. So when I get to about 3,000, I'll shut the gas ballast and then we'll just draw the rest of the vacuum through the oil on the pump. Uh, looks like it's gonna pull good. After I reach a good micron gauge, I'll get y'all some more footage of me charging I'll have to get with these school maintenance guys. They've got a pallet of MO99. That's what they want me to charge it with. So there's no, uh, this is field charge. There's no uh, weight on the data tag for refrigerant. So what I'm gonna do is I'm probably just gonna put a whole drum in through the liquid line to start and have another jug with me. And then we'll just charge it based off subcooling and my sight glass. We have a TXV. So I'm gonna shoot anywhere from like, you know, the seven to 10 range to start. We'll put in a whole drum, fire it up, see what it looks like, and then gas up through the suction line as required. Okay guys, I'll try to make this quick because I know it's noisy over here. So our vacuum held, we pulled a real good vacuum. Got down to about 900 microns. It's pretty good for a system this old. I put about 30 pounds as a liquid through the liquid line, and that's about all it would take. As of right now, I've put in, um, let's see, 50, about 70 pounds on this circuit of MO99. So, we're looking pretty decent. MO99 will run a slightly lower suction and a slightly higher head, but our sight glass is pretty clear. We are sweating back. And if you can see that, let me try to focus the camera. We have about nine degrees superheat, just shy of seven degrees subcooling, 290 head, 62 PSI low. So I think we've accomplished our mission here and we did a pretty good job. Um, if you have any questions or comments or anything like that, leave them down in the comment section below. Glad we got this one taken care of. Keep on HVACing. Peace.